Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a manga review of chapter 891, Believe in Me. And jumping straight into things after a very long break, we are finally back into the Luffy vs. Katakuri action. And slowly, I mean very slowly actually, Luffy is gaining on the Sweet Commander. Katakuri has a startling realization in this chapter that although infrequently, Luffy is in fact managing to see the future just like him. Although he is getting the absolute crap beaten out of him in the process. But I guess that's just what you gotta do to level up that observation, Haki, just as Flashback Rayleigh said. The panel with Luffy's gear third colliding with whatever Katakuru's giant fist is called is absolutely awesome. I mean, my god, I just love this fight. I know it might be a bit slow and the same thing kind of keeps happening over and over, but watching Luffy and Katakuri at work is just a visual feast. Also, as much as I want to get to the really good stuff, I definitely think we need to take our time here in order to beat someone worth over a billion berries. Speaking of bounties, it's getting to the point where I'll be a bit shocked if Luffy's bounty isn't raised to a billion or even over a billion after the events of this arc. He and the Allied forces have just caused too much damage to an Emperor, and Big News Morgans is there present to report all of it. And that amazing bird makes an appearance in this chapter, talking to Stussy, Stussy, whatever her name is, who informs him, as well as Tamago and Montdor, that the Tamatebaka box is responsible for the explosion. And this is why I'm convinced that the bounties are going to be raised to ridiculous levels, and not just Luffy's, but the entire crew, or at least the ones present here. Big News Morgans now has compelling evidence that the Straw Hats planned to take down Big Mom and destroy the entirety of Whole Cake Chateau. From his perspective, this is a phenomenal infiltration and a well-executed strategy, making Luffy seem like a far more dangerous man than he is in reality. And that makes me randomly wonder a bit about the reactions people who know Luffy have to reading this sort of news. Take the Ennis Lobby incident for example. Reading that in the news, you have the Straw Hats brazenly attacking and destroying the entire judicial island. And anybody who knows Luffy probably knows that that sort of destruction isn't really his style. So they probably have endless fun inventing stories in their mind of how the incident actually went down. Then again, the people who don't know Luffy should become absolutely terrified by the very mention of his name after hearing that he destroyed an entire island, or in this case, the home base of one of the most notorious pirates who have ever existed. So unless Big News Morgans gets assassinated by Stussy, Luffy is going to be a top tier player after this arc. But just quickly on that point, it is entirely possible that Stussy assassinates Morgans. I mean, she is working for the world government and it might be in their best interest to cover an event like this up. Just like with Gecko Moria's defeat after Thriller Bark. Or like how they tried to give Smoker the credit for defeating Crocodile. Then again, they were both warlords of the sea and somewhat represented the world government, so maybe they won't care so much about what happens to an emperor. Still, I do think it's awfully convenient that we have both Stussy and Morgans being shown together here, while the rest of the black market guys are kind of nowhere to be seen. Given their juxtaposition, I think that she's either going to silence the bird, or they are going to work together to convey the message that the world government wants. Stepping away from that, we have yet another new Charlotte sibling introduced in this chapter. Her name is Charlotte Flambe, which I believe is a method of cooking rather than a particular food or drink itself. She looks like she may have a bubblegum related devil fruit though, because she's blowing a bubble, but also she herself is a bubble. If so, that seems like an interesting fruit. Bubblegum may even work similar to Luffy's rubber or Katakuri's mochi, except that it is light enough for her to expand her stomach and actually float, unlike Luffy who just falls because of the weight. I have no strong feelings about Flambe herself one way or another just yet, but she did have a kind of funny line in this chapter where she declares that her ultimate ambition is to become the little sister king. That's right, you heard correctly, king, not queen, which is a cute little play on people stating that they wish to become the pirate king. But I'm really not sure why she exists at this stage, much like Charlotte Bavara, who was introduced a few chapters ago and has done a grand total of nothing just yet. At the same time, I really don't want to leave Whole Cake Island without knowing who the 39 daughters and 46 sons of Big Mom are. I want a comprehensive guide to their family, and we're still a long way off that. Including Charlotte Flambe, we now have 16 daughters and 21 sons, although some of them are still yet to be named. And yeah, it does make me wonder where the hell all of the kids are in this huge time of crisis, so you know what, sprinkle some Charlotte children in from now until the end of the arc, and that sounds good to me. So this chapter, we also got a look at Sanji's completed wedding cake. And I went back and looked at chapter 882, and yeah, it's pretty much an exact replica of Strusen's original wedding cake, just with Sanji's more, how shall we say, potent ingredients. 
And that's kind of disappointing, because if we were going to go through this whole baking a cake story, then I really wanted to see a Sanji original creation. Instead, what we have is a very plagiarized cake. And I don't really see why Sanji even went to the trouble of recreating the wedding cake. I mean, it's not as if Big Mom is in any particular mindset to recognize the intricate details. I don't think it matters what it looks like at this stage, she just needs to eat it. But hey, at the very least, the cake is complete. And now we can hopefully move on. The chapter itself ends on a bit of a cliffhanger with the Straw Hats being pursued by an absolutely massive Prometheus who is almost as big as the sun itself. However, just before they are caught and destroyed, Big Mom notices a wonderful aroma approaching, implying that the cake has arrived. At least I hope it's the cake. But then again, Oda has gone to the trouble of obscuring whoever is arriving. So it could be any number of things, like maybe some Charlotte children trying to appease their mother with whatever tasty concoction they've come up with, or even the Germa with a sneaky yet delicious plan. And on that note, seriously, where the hell are the Germa? It's been way too long since we've seen what they're up to, and we're pretty much at the climax here. At this stage, sometimes I forget they were ever even in the arc to begin with. And some other little points just before we wrap up. Once again, Pudding was present in the chapter, and once again, she was a one-note joke. I think her entire presence was a waste of a page, and I cannot wait to leave her behind going into the next arc. Finally, we've begun Leo's cover story as part of the Straw Hat Grant fleet. Although it doesn't look like it will be as exciting as the others. Leo is still in Dress Rosa, rebuilding the country after the untold destruction caused by Doflamingo. Which is understandable, but it's a shame. Because the other Grand Fleet members are all out there expanding the world for us. And for the next four chapters or so, we'll just be revisiting Dress Rosa. But at the very least, Leo looks amazing in his pirate garb. And that pretty much does it for chapter 891. A solid chapter, keeping things moving, but we do unfortunately have another break next week. It's annoying, but hey, that's January for you. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe, and please do comment with your thoughts on the chapter. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.